Hello and welcome to the Business Spotlight interview series. I'm your host, Anu Khanna. Today I'm joined by Tim Carroll, who's the owner of Denor. And uh, it's really exciting to have you with us, Tim. Would you like to give a little brief introduction and tell us more about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for having me and thank you for your time. Um, likewise, it's it's great to be part of this. Um, yeah, so look, I'm owner and managing director of Denor, um, which is a group of companies. Um, the most established one um, within the group is Denor Utility Connections. Um, we are an award-winning utilities project management business. Um, we're investors in people and partners. Um, we are trying to change an industry that we believe could be better, i.e. the utilities industry. And we're just trying to navigate um, our customers through what is quite an arduous and fragmented journey in terms of getting connected to the grid, uh, the gas network, um, the water network. We also look at fiber, that type of stuff, really. Fantastic. Uh, really good, Tim. So how has been this journey for you? Uh, you're doing very well as an organization. So Yeah, yeah we, look, we've, we've done great. Like I said, I've opened up that we've won a few awards. Um, yeah, we'll be looking to expand on that in, in the coming months, really. Um, done really well, really quickly. Um, but that also has given us some challenges around growing growing pains. Um, there's clearly a demand for um, our services out there. Because um, like I said, I don't necessarily believe that customers and also employees um, get what they should get from from this industry now the industry's been through lots of lots of challenges um and there is also a bit of a misconception in terms of the you know some companies being a necessary evil but there is also a lack of understanding in terms of the regulation that these type of companies need to go through in order to achieve something for a particular customer um We've been through some significant change recently that has brought some challenge and I've had to manage um, some risk quite smartly. Um, but all I see now really is, is opportunity. Um, we have a, um, a, a clear vision and a clear mission. We have clear values that we, we, we work towards always, um, or we always try to. Um, and I think, you know, the conversation we had recently, you know, we've definitely got um, a why. We know our purpose, whether it's individually or, or collectively. Um, we know what we do. We know how we do it. But I think the most important thing for us has always been who. Um, so just making sure that we've got the right people, really, from a cultural growth perspective, you know, we use this phrase that you're familiar with around getting the right people on the bus. Um, having the right skills in the right seats, um, that type of stuff, really. So, um, yeah, things have gone well. Um, it's particularly challenging at, at the moment, like I said, but I think, um, you know, going forward, I think we can achieve lots and lots based on the kind of mantras that we have. Yes, Really well done. Sounds like you've got strong foundations. You talked about the big purpose because with a big enough why, you can do any what. Your uh, purpose is defined, the vision, the mission, the culture values, right people on right seats. That's a winning formula. Do you have any challenge in your business? What kind of challenges are you facing? Um, I'd like to say, look, I've, I've had to manage quite a lot of risk recently and that, that covers... Um, a number of areas. Um, one day I'll probably be able to go into that in more specifics. At this moment in time, I just can't. Um, but I think the challenge is for me around education. Um, so really educating our customers, you know, at what point they need to come to us um, in order to make sure that we can manage their cost and time risks effectively what people don't actually realize is some of the stuff that we do look we can do stuff 
reactively and quickly um, because we have the contacts to do that. Um, but some of the stuff that we do and manage, you know, realistically does take time. So I think when you look at one of the biggest reasons why, let's say, a new development gets delayed, quite often it's because of utilities. Now, some of that, some of that's based on the performance of the industry, and that's a challenge that we deal with, you know, on a on a day to day basis. Um, but it also comes through a lack of understanding of how long it takes to do certain things and the regulation that is attached to, you know installing new utility connections effectively. Um, what else? I think um, we've always had a challenge until very recently around visibility. So um, up until a few months ago, everything that we did was through a manual process, which I created going back three years ago. Um, now, it's just not scalable, uh, and it also doesn't give me... Um, the high level visibility that I need that I need to see so I can manage the business through great leadership and also strategic thinking. It's meant that a lot of stuff historically has had to be micromanaged. Um, but again, that's not the solution going forward. So I've been lucky enough to bring um, a really clever trap chap on board called Brooke from Enlightened Studios. Um, sorry, Enlightened Strategies, um, and we've effectively bespoke built um, a SQL-based database project management system, CRM. So we're currently going through a transition of implementing that into our business whilst keeping up the day job. Um, yeah. So that's been a challenge, but it's already bringing significant results in terms of driving efficiency, you know, I'm a big believer of using tech as a creator, um, sorry, tech as a, an accelerator to our business. You know, it shouldn't be used as the one big thing that's going to make a massive difference, um, but it's certainly driving efficiency um, through visibility and some of the parts of what we do, we're starting to automate a little bit. Um, now, there's a balance to find there because... I don't want our business to be transactional. You know, it's a consultative approach. Um, so we just have to get the, uh, you know, the balance right in terms of using tech for automation and automation, but not repl not replacing the really good conversations and the people that effectively are going to deliver, you know, success for us. Yes, that's a really good thing what you said, not wanting the business to be transactional. You're looking for transformation. You're looking for conversations. So what would be your advice to a business owner who's listening to it and thinking, well, how do I go about it? Okay. I think, look, I think this links back to the who, the who piece again. Um, what we've done quite well from day one is get outside help, you know, get an expert to help you in various areas. So that you, you know, we've grown from a, an FTE perspective. Um, you know, <laughs> we've now got 10, 11 full-time em employees, not including myself. But what I have done is in certain areas of the business where I certainly don't have the skill set all the time and we don't and we have a gap in the business itself, um, we've brought outside help in and Actually, the majority of my exec, my exec team, they are basically on retainers effectively. So we've gone out, we've realized that we've got a skill gap. How do we fill this skill gap short to medium term? And it's been about getting the right people to help help us externally. Um, and these guys now, you know, the majority of them present themselves as as the norm. Um, our vision, our vision and mission is not just about people and customers it's also about partners um and i'm very committed to trying to make a difference in the local business community and kind of bringing particularly local business businesses on our growth journey with us um so i could name four or five businesses now whereby you know we've had a relationship for a long period of time and i'll be looking to expand that o over time don't get me wrong, at some point there'll be a decision to make later around what expertise do I 
you know, bring in house um, and what full time employees I need to to back that up. Um, but you know, we're not we're not there yet. And I like the fact that people from different backgrounds, people from different have different experiences, look at things differently. And they've been absolutely integral to our to our growth. Mm -hmm. So I guess the answer to the question is don't try and do it all yourself. There's mm -hmm. people out there that are a lot smarter than me um, that have helped us. You know, and I've always viewed that if I'm the smartest person in that room, then mm -hmm. I've got a problem. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That that's a really good advice because not only you're securing internally right people on right seats, also externally you're getting right partners for long term. You're looking at the right support partners uh, who can work together with you and help you support you grow. Yeah, that's a great advice. So uh, to our audience out there, business owners who are listening to you, what would be your parting words as to you know if they want to grow? similar to yourself in short span of time and getting the foundations right, what's that one thing they can start with? Um, I think, think have, a, have a clear plan for, for, for starters and then make sure that you've got the right people, the right people supporting you. Um, and don't be afraid to take a risk. You know, sometimes you've got to let, let stuff fail for it to succeed long-term. Mm -hmm. um, so I, like, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be scared around taking the risk. You know, if you don't take it, you're never going to achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, look, it has to be calculated. Um, you obviously don't want to do anything reckless. Um, but as part of that decision making process, get outside help. Get get outside support. You do not have to do it all yourself. Yeah, yeah. That sometimes it's quite hard for particularly people like me that are. Uh, basically a control freak um so, so I'm, I'm i'm learning to um delegate a bit more and also trust trust a little bit more as well yes trusting and letting go is the piece of advice and setting strong foundations right people on right seat both internally and externally Absolutely. very good yeah tim thank you very much thank you for your time and joining us on our business spotlight series no problem at all. It's been a pleasure.